If you're having credit problems, I feel bad for you, son. A thousand problems, but a car rank one. Wills for sure got me back in the car. Leasing with my credit, I was like, oh man, forget it. Who would have thought I'd be accepted and more? But now I got the keys, I feel so pleased. All types of cars, Fiat, Minis. No, boom. If you're having credit problems, I feel bad for you, son. A thousand problems, but a car rank one. Wills for sure got me back in the car. Leasing with my credit, I I was like, oh man, forget it. Who would have thought I'd be accepted and more? But now I got the keys, I feel so pleased. All types of cars, Fiat, Minis, Renaults, you know, boom, boom, let's go. Worlds for sure, car leasing for every credit score. If you're having credit problems, I feel bad for you, son. A thousand problems, but a car rank one. Wills for sure got me back in the car. Leasing with my credit, I was like, oh man, forget it. Who would have thought I'd be accepted and more? But now I got the keys, I feel so pleased. All types of cars, Fiat, Minis, Renaults, you know, boom, boom, let's go. Wills for sure, car leasing for every credit score. COVID 19, especially the new variant, is spreading quickly across the country. This puts many people at risk of serious disease and is placing a lot of pressure on our NHS. Once more, we must all stay home. If it is essential to go out, remember, wash your hands, cover your face indoors and keep your distance from others. Vaccines give clear hope for the future, but for now, we must all stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. is spreading quickly across the country. COVID-19, especially the new variant, is spreading quickly across the country. This puts many people at risk of serious disease and is placing a lot of pressure on our NHS. Once more, we must all stay home. If it is essential to go out, remember, wash your hands, cover your face indoors and keep your distance from others. Vaccines give clear hope for the future, but for now, we must all stay home Protect the NHS, save lives. COVID-19, especially the new variant, is spreading quickly across the country. This puts many people at risk of serious disease and is placing a lot of pressure on our NHS. Once more, we must all stay home. If it is essential to go out, remember, wash your hands, cover your face indoors and keep your distance from others. Vaccines give clear hope for the future, but for now, we must all stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. To be back this third Sunday in January 2021. I hope you've been doing good. Well, actually, we we have not been doing good, you want to say, but we give thanks to God. As you normally say, we give thanks to God for his sparing mercies. Now, let us pray. Let us pray. Loving God, when our faith is tested to the limit and we stumble, forgive us. When our feet stray from the path that you have chosen for us and take our own way, Lord, forgive us. When our neighbors are in need and we pass them by as if we don't see them, Lord, forgive us. When voices of this world 
drown your love in this one. Lord, forgive us. Lord, at this time of anxiety, this time of sleepless nights, this time when we are sick, this time when we have relatives who are sick. Lord, be with us, strengthen our faith. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to talk for a short while, for about 45 minutes or so, about people and power. People and power. You know, I've been thinking about power, about getting power, you know, these past few weeks. In fact, I'm saying this, but don't say this to, it, to anyone. I'm thinking, in fact, of contesting to, to be president of my country so I can get power. But first, like the process, I need to get symbol from the party, and they've already told me that I'm lagging in subscription, so I will not get the authority, the symbol to, con to, to, to contest the next general election in 2023 to become president. People and power. And look at at people with power, where do we start? You know, when I want examples of anything and indeed everything, I I turn to the Bible. Yes, I I, I turn to the all oh, the holy book of scriptures. And if you turn with me, if you turn, you look at the gospel according to John, the first verse in the first chapter. It reads, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If you substitute word, the word word, with power, then it will be something like in the beginning was the power and the power was with God and the power was God. That's the gospel according to John. If you flip the pages backwards from the gospel right to the beginning, so the first book in the Bible, which is the book of Genesis, there you read the creation story. And there briefly, we are told that after God had created everything in the environment, he created human beings, he created man. And then God gave man power, power over everything he had previously created. He gave man power, power to rule everything in the environment. After he had created man, he had a thought, and it was right that man as he made would need a companion. So God created a woman Eve, right? To become a companion, a partner to the man Adam. God gave Eve, the woman, that power to become a companion and an advisor to Adam. How did Eve use her power? Now, like everywhere else, there are, there are rules and regulations. There was one rule in that Garden of Eden. That's where Adam and Eve were. I guess you know that. And that 
particular rule was that there was a particular fruit. We describe that fruit as apple. That God commanded that Adam did not eat. Eve, being powerful as a companion, Eve having that power of being not only a companion but the advisor, the special advisor, the only advisor to Adam. She used a power to convince Adam to disobey God and eat the forbidden fruit. How do you use your power when you are in a position to advise? How do you use that power? People and power. Do you use that power to advise the one who depends on you, the one who listens to you, the one who believes you, who believes your thinking? Do you use your power, your power to misdirect that person? Do you use that power? to disobey God. How do you use that power? Now, in, in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, when we want to uh, uh, read about or think about people with power, I mean, there are so many people referred to as people with power, but I think the easiest way is to look at um, the leaders, the heads of states, who were kings, and to see how they used their power, and then to see how we can learn from how they used their power. You may have heard about King Saul, King David, and King Solomon. But I don't know that if you've heard about King Manasseh. King Manasseh is described in the Bible as, as one who, who sought after the will of God. In fact, in the Hebrew, Hebrew scriptures, King Manasseh, Manasseh is described as the, the first king of the empire of Israel. You know, and that empire included Israel and Judah. King Manasseh, he was the first king of that empire. You may not have heard of him because he ruled for just about two years. Because he had power, King Manasseh used his power to do unspeakable things to God's people. He punished God's people because he had power. He jailed God's people because he had power. I'm talking about people with power. King Manasseh Kill people because he had power. King Manasseh even killed his own son as sacrifices to other gods. And this is the point. He prayed to God and God gave him power. After he had received power from God and had become and had become head of the king of the empire. He thought that God's power to give it to him was not enough. So he turned to other gods, false gods, idols, seeking more power. A 
as a leader, a community leader, a national leader, a president, a head of state, the head of your, your family. God has placed you in that position. Are you satisfied? Or are you going out sacrificing everything and anything in your path so that you will have more power? More power. Power in addition to the additional powers that has been bestowed upon you by God. By, the natural, by natural ways, it could be by elections, it could be by so many other ways. Are you satisfied? Earlier on, I mentioned that, that um, there are other kings. And it just came, it comes to mind that um, the first one I'd like to mention here that I should mention is King Saul. Because after Manasseh, then King Saul became king. And in fact, in fact, I'd like to correct myself, really, it's King Saul who became who became the, the first king of this empire that combined both Israel and Judah. Saul, as you may have heard, was a powerful king. Very powerful. He grew in obedience to God. And as a result of his obedience, he did not ask for it. God sent Samuel to anoint him so as king. When you are obedient to God, God will bestow power unto you because power belongs only unto God. That's why I started by saying, in the beginning was power. The power was with God and the power was God. After King Saul was made king, over Israel. He became successful in wars. He went into several battles, war after war after war, and he succeeded. And he was succeeding through the directions from God. God was giving him directions through the prophet Samuel. Samuel was, as it were, the chief of staff, the chief advisor to the head of state, to the king, to the president, to the prime minister in our time, but in that time to the king so People with power. When Saul had become obsessed with power, the first person he shunned, the first person he avoided, the first person he pushed aside was the prophet Samuel, Samuel who anointed him, Samuel who prayed for him, Samuel who was the chief advisor, Samuel who was showing him the right path, Samuel the prophet who was telling Saul what was right and what was wrong as head of state. Saul became tired with his own chief advice and pushed Samuel aside. He pushed Samuel aside. Then God became annoyed with Saul. And if you are a leader, you 
start going your own way and not doing the will of God to the extent that God starts becoming annoyed with you. If you're a leader in the family, you're a leader in the community, or if you're a leader kind of things, when God becomes annoyed with you, that's what happened with Saul. God will start reducing your heart. And you will know that. You will know that. God is reducing your heart. When you see those who we are supporting you, when you see those who are saluting you, when you see those who are raising you high, turning their backs against you. That's what happened to the king so that's the end of it. King Saul, who was winning battle after battle. King Saul, who was popular. But after losing his popularity with God, King Saul, the head of state of Israel and Judah, that losing popularity with his own people. If you're a leader, you're a head of state, you're a head of your community. When you start losing favor with God, the next thing is you will start losing favor with your people. And next will be your downfall. Thinking about King Saul. In the book of Psalm. The books of Psalm. He started losing battle after battle. He, 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 he was so depressed that one time when he had uh, mental problems, uh, the friend of one of his sons, um, Jonathan, uh, um, and that friend was David, he used to play music for him. And those of you who are in mental, right? maybe it's familiar story, there are some people, you know, I, I'm, when I'm stressed, music comes to that, nothing with some people. You, you know, and that will come in that. So, he became fond of David. When Pa started forsaking him, he started forsaking everyone, including, including uh, uh, um, David, his favorite one, David, his best friend. And in one of the wars, he had to enter into battle even against him. Because God had sent Samuel to King Saul with a message that King Saul in our language must step down from power. But King Saul still wanted power, so he hung to power and was prepared for war. And there was war. There were wars. And Saul was losing. Saul so was winning wars and wars and battles and battles. After becoming obsessed with power, he lost favor with God. He started losing power. Now he was losing wars. He was fighting against his friends. And he was losing friends. Including his best, one of his best friends, David. Including his chief of staff. His chief advice staff. The prophet Samuel. At one point, he fell right into the rock in the battle, into the hands of David. But David let him go. David let him go. In fact, I think the fan King Saul exhausted at one point. David saw him and you know he, he just said, you know, if you want to kill you, I will kill you. But you know what David did? David just exchanged so so that when King Saul woke up, he would realize that, oh my god, why is my soul? It must have been that I was sleeping. If there is a soldier, you are asleep and you wake up, you don't see your body, you see your enemy is gone. You know what has happened. You know that your enemy was here. That's what David did to King Saul. When it came to the point that Saul realized that he was losing everything, he could not bear to see himself being defeated in battle, namely being killed in battle by his enemy. It's like some of our leaders cannot face it, seeing being defeated in democratic election. 
and in those days, there are no democratic elections, but then it was, if you like, survival of the fittest. They saw the fit, just like leaders will see the fit in democratic elections and not wanting to accept. They saw the fit in this battle and he, he, he refused to accept the fit. So you know what Saul did? He stuck his sword on the ground with a pointed path upwards and threw himself on the sword, thereby killing himself, thereby committing suicide. That's how Saul died, by throwing himself on his own sword. Hence the saying, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. King Saul lived by himself. He died. He died by his son. Fast forward. Then King David, you know, perhaps you know and you would have heard about. King David. I'm talking about people and power. King David was described as a man after God sat, as a man who will do everything that God asked him to do. And he started well as a shepherd boy. Uh, uh, he was killing lions and uh, when Israel was fighting against the, 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 the Philistines, another group, he, 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 you know, he, 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 at one point, you know, he killed the, 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 the what you might say, the warrior of the Philistines, a big, mighty man called um, uh, Goliath. He killed him with one stone. Forget. You know. So, after Saul had killed himself, in Saul, David became king. So David became the second king in the empire of Israel. David became king. And then there's a question which uh, scholars have asked, and I have asked myself, and that is, how can we say that David was after the commandment of God fully and solely when David himself really and truly if he committed a good number of sins yeah, he, 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 he he committed he committed he committed lots of adultery to put it mildly and quietly and nicely you know He did that. I mean, there is one, what should I say, one story which I would say everybody knows about David, you understand? There was a woman. I, 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 I think she, yeah, she's called Bathsheba. The, 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 the woman was having a bath in a street, right? That woman was the wife of one of the, the sergeants, one of the soldiers in David's arm. The skin was below and David's palace, he was king. While he was, uh, say, on the roof of his palace, he saw this woman having a bath in the street. Beautiful woman, as described in the scripture. He sent for the woman and committed, committed adultery with the woman. And after finding out that the woman, Bathsheba, was the wife of one of his soldiers, Uriah. David the king sent Uriah to battle. And he was in the first world in a position where he, he Uriah, was killed, right? So you, you, he, you send, when you commit adultery with your soldier's wife, then you send your soldier to the battle only for him to be killed. That's one thing David did. The people say that, uh, 
And I still accept that David sought after God's commandment. One other thing that David did, which was not right, his son committed, his son raped his step sister, a girl called Tammy. And David did and said nothing. By this thing that um, uh, um, uh, people will say, keep it in the family. He said nothing. And he did so many other things. How then did he have faithful with God? Now, when you follow the story to so long, and I'm just facing it, you realize that Paul's face, when David realized that he had sinned, he turned unto God and repented. If you're a leader in your community, in the nation, head of state, head of community, head of a social club. When you wrong the people you have from wrong God. So in repenting, he, he, as a form of making things right, you confess first to God and then turn a new page. David did that several times when you read the 72 Psalms, which are confirmed that he will, you will see him repenting most of the time. But at times after we have had power, power, we find it really too difficult. We say we are sorry to God, let alone people. Also, David was merciful. Merciful meaning he was in a position where he, he could have taken action against someone, you know, but he never did. You see, the, the, a coup was planned against David. You know, and the Lord, of the course, you read by the Holy he is um, Absalom. Absalom from a coup against King David. David. At the time, possibly now, when you form a coup, you are supposed to die. But King David forgave Absalom. He used his power. The law said it was easy and that Absalom must be executed. But David used his power as king to forgive. David used his power as king to save the life of Absalom. How do you use your power as leader in your community, in your club, in your social, uh, 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 in your social club? In your house, how do you use the power to save? In the church, how do you use the power to save? As Henry said, how do you use your power to save, to take vengeance, or to forgive? David used his power to forgive Absalom. So God remembered. God remembered those days. Such that when he himself offended God, where he was all clear, according to the commandments given God gave to Moses, which David was quite familiar with. It was quite clear that David must be killed. But God remembered. I mentioned Absalom, but there were some other cases. God remembered 
that David had been merciful to others, so God was merciful to him. It is said that when you sow seeds, when you plant seeds of mercy, when you read mercy, mercy will come rushing at you. Somebody who that mercy will boomerang at you. That is, when you have shown mercy to people, when you are in a position where you need really mercy, 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 and forgiveness, and forgiveness from, from God will come to meet you with a bang, rushing, mercy will come back with, 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 without asking, without expecting. When something boomerangs at you, it comes with so, so much speed. You don't see it, you feel it. You don't ask for something to boom, boomerang at you, it comes. And comes to fall. David showed and showed mercy. He showed mercy to Absalom, who brought him to be cool against him. So when he offended God, God showed him mercy. I pray today that those of us with power. Those of us with power, power in the home, power in the community, power, power in our social groups, power, 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 power in the social media because we know how to write, we know how to communicate. Power because we are head of state, we are president, we are prime minister. Power. I pray that we may lose such power such power to show mercy unto God's people. Such power to forgive. Forgive, we pray daily in the Lord's prayer. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And this is the prayer which we receive from our king. Our king who was born on Christmas Day. Our leader, our head of state who had so much power, a lot of power, because he was the son of God. He was the one, the only the one referred to as the son of God. He had so much power. But then he came with all humility, showing that there is power in humility. If you are powerful, you can be humble. There is nothing that says people with power should not be humble. Humility is not weakness. My message is not to condemn you with power. My message is to encourage you with power to, to be strong enough, to be powerful enough, to be humble. It is so difficult for us to be humble when we are powerful. When you vote for me and I become leader of the club, when you vote for me in 2023 as I'm intending to contest to become president of my country, I pray that I be humble. But without prayer, and do that like in Saul and the others that you know, being obsessed with power. But if I become obsessed with power, I hereby pray that God will remind me of what happens to those who become so obsessed with, fa with power that they forget that power belongs only unto him, the Lord God Almighty. Christ was powerful. His power was in humility. And his ministry was a powerful ministry. But his ministry was a humble one. The most powerful woman in the Bible 
is the mother of prayer. It has to, she has to be the most powerful one because she gave birth to the Son of God. How many times did you hear of her in the Bible? How many times did you, did you hear of that powerful woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus, shouting? She showed her power by being humble. Even at the time when they were going to crucify his son, Jesus Christ, with humility. She walked behind the crowd unto them. How many women? Power because she was powerful. How many women with power would have been that humble? Christ was powerful, but he was humble even unto death. The Christ showed his power. By being humble, even to those who are persecuting him. He was humbled unto death. But even though he was humbled unto death, he allowed them to crucify him. Still, death did not defeat him because he rose again from the grave. That's what happens. When we are humble but dependent upon God. That's why at this crucifixion he said, Lord, it is your will. That's what the powerful man said. The powerful man lives and depends on God. My message is to you, my friends, the leaders, leaders of clubs, leaders of football teams, leaders of churches, leaders of all religions. There are times, and we, we, we read in the scriptures, but we don't learn lessons. There are times where you call us, the person who called man of God, well, thank you. There are times, most times, where he Those of us who have been appointed to lead God's people feel so powerful that we equate, we want to equate ourselves with God. Power belongs only unto God. So as we assume leadership role. As we are in leadership position, we who are considered to be people with power, I pray that in our powerful and uh, in our leadership, in our control, I pray that we will always remember that power belongs only unto God. And as we lead God, as we lead God's people, as we rule the nations, as prime ministers, as presidents, as everything, as we give our commands, as we 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 we, 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 we demonstrate authority, I feel that we continually ask ourselves, how does it? How does our rules and regulations fit in with God's command? How does our actions as leaders, how does it fit in the guidance of him that gave us the power? How does it fit in
the 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 the, the, the I don't say parameters. I I I'm just fit into into the framework of him who has power. But I have no doubt that we have our own experiences of the rise and fall of people who abuse power and also of leaders who have abused power. We see them in the scriptures, we see them in political history, we see them currently. As we make our comments, as we criticize, as we even condemn, let us remember ourselves. Because we are all people of power. We are all people with power in our separate ways, in our different ways, in our homes, in our offices, in our groups, in our social media groups. How do we use such power? Whatever way we use the power, I pray that we always recognize that power belongs only unto God. And if we abuse the power that he has given to us as leaders, he will take no permission from us to take this power away from us. But I pray and I believe that wherein we are failing in carrying out our duties properly as leaders, I pray this day that we will look to God, we will pray, and we will confess our sins. We will ask Him to make our hearts clean within us, and pray that He does not take His Holy Spirit away from us. Because we've seen leaders the way we believe when God takes his Holy Spirit away from us. But God and I pray family, God will bless you as leaders in your various ways, as leaders in your home, as people with power in your office. You know, even through all this lockdown, you understand? When perhaps you are walking from a distance, but you are powerful. You are powerful. So don't allow, but don't say you cannot do anything. I mean, the rest can do the work. Use your power according to the work, to the will of the one that has given you power. If you're a leader in the wider community, if you are leading the nation, use your power wisely and God. We bless you. I thank you for listening. All is not lost. God is, is with you and he will continue to protect you with his power and to make you powerful in whatever you do. At this point, I would like to join others of you who have celebrated birthdays during this month of January and who are celebrating birthdays today and who will be celebrating birthdays you know, during the course of this month. I would say short prayer for you, let us pray. Loving God, I join all those who are celebrating by, who are celebrating their birthdays during this month of January. I remember those also who have already celebrated their birthday. Some are celebrating their birthday today. Lord, continue to enrich them by your power. Give them power to be strengthened, to do their daily tasks according to your will. This we ask in the name of the most powerful one ever created. Jesus Christ. Amen. And now before I leave in two minutes time, I would like to extend my sincere condolences 
to all of you. You are mourning the loss of loved ones. It's difficult. It's difficult. So come with me, dear Lord. I pray for all those who are mourning, who are mourning at this time. I pray for those whom we love but see no longer. It cannot be familiar story. I, I also say it's familiar story because every day I have some bond whom I know definitely every week who has passed away. I told my friends yesterday on one group, I said, I've packed my bags. I'm waiting for the Lord to call me. And they said, No, unpack your bags. This morning, Facebook. I love Facebook, but I'm beginning to discard Facebook. Because each time I look at Facebook, I see a friend who's passed away. I saw a long time friend, a lady, who is over. I couldn't believe it. passed away. On the 20th of December, uh, was my birthday. One of the first people to call me was my friend. Victor Friend, a friend, a colleague, a comrade at the APC party. Yes, we spoke on Boxing Day. Victor Friend will send religious texts to me every day, including the day he died. Yes. Somebody texts me with uh, Boxing Day and the day after Boxing Day. And I died almost, I think Boxing Day was there. We are having the VG. Tonight, as, that's why I'm going to finish in two minutes because I have to take part in the online VJ for my friend and brother and comrade Victor Fred. Who is at Oba? We have your list, please. Oba, good friend. I just saw it on Facebook. Was then yesterday, another friend from school days, I saw his name on Facebook too, has passed away. Eugene Jones. The brother of Eugene Jones, Winston Jones, died two weeks ago. I think Winston Jones is being buried right now as I speak. The pastor. So there you go, you have two brothers died within two weeks in one family. But we pray to God for the pastors. Now this time I pray that those faithfully departed will rest. Our final prayer, let us pray. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with whatever we touch, do, or say. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the ever blessed Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all. Now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Okay, I wish you all a successful week. Stay safe. You know the rules. I, I will not go ahead and start reading them to you again. We wash our hands. We will keep our distance. You know, when our names are called, we go and have the vaccine. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye bye. COVID-19, especially the new variant, is spreading quickly across the country. This puts many people at risk of serious disease and is placing a lot of pressure on our NHS. Once more, we must all stay home. If it is essential to go out, remember, wash your hands, cover your face indoors and keep your distance from others. Vaccines give clear hope for the future, but for now, we must all stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. COVID-19, especially the new variant, is spreading quickly across the country. This puts many people at risk of serious disease and is placing a lot of pressure on our NHS. Once more, we must all stay home. If it is essential to go out, remember, wash your hands, cover your face indoors and keep your distance from others. Vaccines give clear hope for the future, but for now, we must all stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. 
COVID-19, especially the new variant, is spreading quickly across the country. This puts many people at risk of serious disease and is placing a lot of pressure on our NHS. Once more, we must all stay home. If it is essential to go out, remember, wash your hands, cover your face indoors, and keep your distance from others. Vaccines give clear hope for the future, but for now, you must all stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. If you have having credit problems, I feel bad for you, son. A thousand problems, but a car rank one. Wills for sure got me back in the car. Lisa, with my credit, I was like, ah, oh, man, forget it. Who would have thought I'd be accepted and more? But now I got the keys, I feel so pleased. All types of cars, Fiat's, Minis, Renaults, you know, boom, boom, let's go. Wills for sure, car leasing for every credit score. If you're having credit problems, I feel bad for you, son. A thousand problems, but a car rank one. Wills for sure got me back in the car. Lisa, with my credit, I was like, ah, oh, man, forget it. Who would have thought I'd be accepted and more? But now I got the keys, I feel so pleased. All types of cars, Fiat's, Minis, Renaults, you know. Boom, boom, let's go. Wills for sure, car leasing for every credit score.
follows it. Maybe you are thinking, what is your prayer bringing? With all your praises and singing, nothing is wrong. But maybe you are thinking, what is your prayer bringing? With all your praises and singing. Nothing is wrong, yeah You have waited on the Lord for so long You should know, you should know That it's never late No, 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 no You are not waiting in vain Hold on to your dream Write it down and make it plain You go up, just believe You go up, with Papa God Go up, very, very soon you Go up you go up, just believe you go up with Papa God. Go up, very, very soon you go up. It is written, written. The devil may fight, but you have the victory. It is written, written. You may weep for the night, but joy comes in the morning. What is it he can do for you if he gave his life for you? God can never fail you. He has plans for you. He's mindful of you. God can never fail. He has plans for you. He's mindful of you. Ooh. So keep thanking him, praising him. Leave it all to him. He go up, just believe. He go up with Papa God. Go up, very very soon. Go up. You go up, just believe You go up, with Papa God Go up, very very soon Go up Provision go up, the healing go up, the next level go up. So pray, believe and wait. God not the like pray, believe and wait. God in not the faith, pray, believe and wait. God not the like pray, believe and wait. God not the like pray. Believe and wait God did not defend pray Believe and wait God did not the lie Go up, go just believe up, yeah. Go up, with Papa God Go up, I say go very, up, very soon yeah. Go up, God, I say go, go up, just believe Go up, with Papa God Go up, go up, go up very, very soon Go, go up, up yeah. Unstoppable, 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 
unstoppable. 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 Come, let's walk together. I will be there for you always. Come springtime, come rain time, come summertime, come sunshine, come daytime, come nighttime, come winter. Come snow time, I promise I will never leave your hands, and I will hold on to the end. Unstoppable, 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 unstoppable. 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 Innocent, 
I will be the 
head I not detail Plans of my enemies, them don't fail Anywhere I go, now my name then the hill I am fast like cheetah, they are slow like steel The head I not detail Plans of my enemies, them don't fail I am sharper than knife, I am sharper than nail Them are small like ant, I am bigger than will My baba God don't lift you up Nobody, nobody will make you drop Nobody will make you drop Baba God don't lift me up He don't lift me up I say nobody, nobody will make a drop Nobody no go make a drop Shock you, make a shock you With progress I go shock you Shock you, make a shock you With success I go shock you Shock you, make a shock you Let me know me, I go shock you Shock you, make a shock you With big big house, I go shock you Thank you. On the Sunday when we return myself and um, DJ Ish, 
So I want to say thank you to you all and apologies for the absence of program between September and December, especially when it was done in an impromptu manner. Apologies to everybody out there, the public, those who were working on diaspora voices. Again, apologize to you guys sincerely. But let's move forward now. As you can see, the new diaspora voices is aiming to promoting men's vision. And that's why we're promoting men's vision. We're encouraging men to talk, use this platform to talk and share their thoughts and their views. Yes, we are going to be having our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, our nieces, our aunties, and our grandmothers as well. That means we are having women on the station. We're not saying we're not. We're just giving um, the voices of men as well to be heard on this platform, where we're allowing men to share their thoughts. As we know, there's a lot of women empowerment groups out there, and we need to also showcase what the grandfathers, the dads, the uncles, the brothers, the male cousins, and so on, the male friends are doing and saying and thinking. So on that small voices SL, we're giving voices, sharing men's vision in every aspect, from health to wealth, from sports to well-being, from education to culture, from lifestyle to entertainment, and so on and so forth. So, why not join us each and every Sunday with Mr. Weber, Sunday Good Word. Also, on Friday night, we will be streaming the Dawa program, which will be pre-recorded. And then, on Mondays, it will be myself and DJ Ish with the regular Diaspora Voices program. And also, now and again, we will be streaming programs on Tuesday where we will showcase the voices of our sisters, our women. You see, there is a twist to it. So we're not saying we're not showcasing women's voices. So but I want to say thank you to you. I've just been out there. I've just run an hour and 47 minutes of half marathon, which I feel great about. And at 13.1 miles plus, I just this got done. So please, please, please remember this. Remember this for the safety of yourself and others. Hands, wash your hands regularly. Every time you leave your home, you wash your hands before you leave. When you come back into your home, you wash your hands before you do anything, any responsible task. Clean your environment as often as you can. Wipe your door handles, wipe your walls, wipe your tables, wipe your surfaces, even your televisions and your stereos at home, your hi-fis. When was the last time you give them a good wipe? Use disinfectant to wipe them clean. Okay, also remember every time you step out in a public space or even if you're walking and there's two or more people around you that you don't know, cover your face with your own personalized face covering or you use a surgical face mask if you can afford to buy them in your local stores or supermarkets or wherever they, they sold. Cover your face as often as you can. Sometimes, even if you are in your own home, cover your face just so that you can get into the psychological mindset of your children to cover their face and cover their mouth and nose is important. So make sure they do that and make sure you do that when you go shopping to the supermarket, when you go to your local chemist, when you go down the stores, when you go down to the market store, make sure you are covered your nose and your mouth and you cover yourself. To protect. And also, you need to maintain a good distance. Keep a distance between yourself and other people who you don't know, who you have not mingled with. And give at least a minimum of two meters distance. Keep it safe. Keep it safe. If you have to go out and it's absolutely essential, then do it. If you don't need to go out, then stay at home and then do your localized shopping. It's easy. No force. Shop online. It's been made easy. You will receive your shopping just in time. However, if it's essential that you must go out, then go out and do so and shop safely, maintaining a good distance. If you have to meet people, try to meet only 
only your own family members in your house go for fresh air in your own home. Don't meet people that you don't know. This is not the time for socializing. There will be many, many more times for socializing and gathering. So, please, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Remember this. Hands. Wash your hands regularly before you leave your home and when you return from um, outdoors and return indoors. Cover your face and your mouth as often as you can, especially you must when you are out in the public, in public transport, in the public um, places, supermarkets, market stores, cover your face, your nose and your mouth properly. Maintain a good distance, okay? Maintain a good distance, minimum of two meters. Don't meet people that you don't live within the same house. Only go out with people that are in the same house as you. Stay safe, stay blessed, protect yourself, protect others, protect the NHS. God bless you. Protect Sierra Leone healthcare service as well. Because if you are in Sierra Leone and you're not maintaining a good distance and you've traveled from outside, of Sierra Leone and you're not a resident of Sierra Leone. I, when I say resident of Sierra Leone, even if you're Sierra Leonean but you're visiting, we respect your social distancing that you have in your local country and implement it in Sierra Leone. Don't use Sierra Leone as a safe haven for you to abuse the law. Respect the rules and regulation of our country. Remember, God bless you. God bless Mama Sierra Leone. God bless the United Kingdom. Stay safe. Peace. DJ Lito. Yeah, I thank God I survived yeah, yeah. 2021 will be my own year Please Lord, hear my own cry yeah. I wanna be the head, not the tail Lord please bless me with the grace I expect from nobody Lord please be my own body I crash on the mix 